Hello guys and welcome back to the How To Animate YouTube channel and in this video we'll be looking at moving holds in 3D animation. I'll explain what they are, give you some examples of different types and then demonstrate the best way to do them in Maya. I hope that by watching this video you will have a better understanding of what makes a good moving hold. Now when 3D animation was in its infancy they quickly worked out that you couldn't hold a pose completely still as 2D animation allows. This is because 3D animation requires a small amount of motion to keep the character feeling alive. Now the key to a good moving hold is to apply just the right amount of motion. If you give it too much it can feel floaty. If you give it too little then you'll lose the sense of life that the character needs. Now other considerations are the style of animation. If you're doing a super stylized animation, such as the examples being shown at the moment, then you can hit strong poses with minimal overlap and then just add very subtle eye darts and slight movements. The more towards realism you go, the more all parts of the body stay in motion to some degree. If you ever work with motion capture, you will see what I mean. Humans tend to move about a lot even when they think they are still. It's up to us as animators to find these nuances in the performance and apply them to our work. So let's have a look at some typical examples of moving holds and I'll take you through the process of how to do them in Maya. So here we are inside of Maya with a new how to animate character that I've been working on. Uh, it's still very much a work in progress, he hasn't got any facial controls yet but for this tutorial he'll do just fine. Now I'm going to share with you a couple of examples of how I like to do moving holds. I must stress that these are just methods that I have developed over the years and there are plenty of other ways to do this. So I've quickly roughed in this first animation that we're going to be looking at here. It's basically him just sneaking forward and going into this kind of sneaky pose. If you have a look at it, I've added a slight slow into it. So let's start by talking about how we build texture. You know, after you hit a pose and it completely dies, what do you do? Now there is a couple of things to consider. One is overlap and overshoot and offsetting of controls so you'll see as he comes up you've already been given the direction that the overshoot's going to be okay he's slowed into it so we know that as he stops he's going to return back here so you see if you just bring him back and just rotate okay so the the hips here are going to overshoot their mark and then come back and settle. Now we can build overshoot and what overshoot is and overlap is basically in animation and in real life of course uh, not everything arrives at the same time okay and it's it's much more appealing to have certain parts of the body be delayed okay so I think here it'd be quite nice because the hips are rising just to bring this chest over okay and also the head so we get the start of kind of like a reverse C shape. Okay, so as he hits the pose, he can then overshoot the body a bit and then just bring it back afterwards. See, and you can do the same with the head as well. So as it comes up, he's still rotating back. And I'm just going to delay that a bit. Okay, and at this point just very slightly nudge it over and then nudge it back. Okay, so that gives it a nice overshoot. Okay. Now this is basically the start of your moving hold. Okay, depending on how long you're gonna keep the character in this kind of position, you've already been given quite a few frames of animation here for free on the overshoot. So from here he's his hips have gone up and to the left with them returned so now you can start just giving everything a slight nudge okay and it's going to set to spline now another technique i found quite useful is giving controls a little wiggle okay so in in maya if you press the plus and minus keys you can basically scale your rotation tool. Now the bigger you have this, the finer your movements allows. So it's quite nice just to give everything just a tiny little wiggle. Okay. And 
and this allows you just to build a little bit of texture here and there without going too crazy. Okay, it just allows for fine details. You just go through all your controls like so and just give it a little wiggle. Okay, so let's see how that looks now. So we've got quite a nice settle going on here. Okay, and you must remember characters breathe. Okay, so if you have got a character here like this and you're trying to find some texture, then just give them a slight bit of the breathe cycle, okay, on the kind of chest control. So if you imagine here he's taking a breath in as he settles and then just add a bit of rotation up and down, up and down and it will give the impression that the character is breathing and it's just a nice way of just keeping the character alive um, it would be nice at this point you know because he's got his mouth open just to kind of match that breathing so as he breathes out just kind of subtly open up the jaw breathes in just bring it up a little bit like so okay so It's just finding little nuances and little texture bits. Um, it's always always nice as well. So, uh, put some eye darts in. Okay. So at this point, just every every once in a while, just add a two-frame eye dart going along. Okay. Very subtle. So you see now he's starting to feel just a little bit more alive. Um, obviously I could work on this for quite a while, you know, just tweaking and tweaking, but I think you guys get the idea. So let's move on to a different kind of moving hold. Okay, so let's have a look at another one. This is going to be what's known as a boil, and I've roughed in the character uh, doing a spell attack. Uh, so you see he anticipates and then releases. Um, and basically what a boil is, is where the character tenses his muscles up so much that they shake. Uh, this is great for if you're doing a performance animation and the character is really angry or wound up. Um, so you hit a pose and you kind of hold it and you just have everything kind of boil and shake. It's also very good for this kind of uh, sort of games type animation where uh, the character is building up a lot of energy. So let's have a look. This is just the base animation here. So what we're going to do to create the boil is to uh, add an animation layer. So I'm just going to select everything on the character and go over to Anim. And I'm going to do a whole other video explaining how to use animation layers uh, in the future because it really does deserve its own video. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with animation layers. Um, but for now, just to basically explain it is you've got your base base animation here and on top of that you add an animation layer as an additive okay so I've locked my base animation layer here and basically what it allows you to do just give you a quick example is to layer on anything you want on top of it okay so you can just go through and over key anything you want on top and you won't break your base animation so it's really good for this kind of stuff where you don't want to go in and start messing around with you know your your main animation your curves you just want to add a bit of a bit of shake okay I'm just going to quickly explain to you how to do this so we want the boil to start probably about here okay so what I'm going to do is every couple of frames just go along like so and give it a bit of a wiggle okay so that's one control I'm not going to keep going because I'm going to loop this uh, into infinity and then I'm going to use the, the weight to switch it off at the end. Okay, so to save a bit of time, just add just add a bit, you know. And let's do our chest control as well. So same thing, just every couple of frames, give it a wiggle. Okay, that'll do. I'm going to add a bit to the arms as well. 
through, try and make it as random as possible. Okay, and this arm too. So, just adding shake throughout. Okay, I think that'll probably do for now. Let's, let's add just a little bit onto the head as well. So that will work as an example. So now what I'm going to do is select all the controls. I'm going to open up the graph editor and select everything and go up to curves, post infinity, cycle. Okay, and that will basically loop it, everything on this curve throughout eternity. Okay, now the cool thing about being on an animation layer is you've got uh, your weight here. Okay, so if you decide, ah, oh, it's too much, you can just switch it down to half. Okay, or you can switch it almost off. So zero is off, one, so you can dial anywhere in between. And this weight is also keyable. The cool thing about this uh, being on animation layer is you're able to adjust the weight. So if you decide, oh, it's, it's too much shake, you can just dial back the weight here to half. Uh, zero is off, one is full. So you're able to do that, and you're also able to key the weight, which is handy. So let's have a look at this. So we want to start off on a zero weight. Okay, so you just set a key there, and towards the end of the animation, we want it all the way on one. So set another key here. So you see how he builds up, starts shaking, shaking, and then releases. It can also be animated on the graph editor. So if you've got a control selected, it will add something called weight. And this is your weight curve here, so you're able to go in and, and tweak this how you want. So let's give it a bit more weight towards the end. So shake, 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 and release. So let's just push that along a little bit. Cool. And that's just a very quick way of adding a nice bit of texture. You know, just adding boil. So let's just do a quick recap. Moving holds can be very hard to get right at first, but you will get better with practice. And you need to learn to find the sweet spot. You know, too much motion, it will feel mushy and floaty, and too little, and the character will die. So finding that sweet spot can be very helpful. The important thing is to keep the character alive, to convince the audience that it's a living, breathing being that is thinking. And sometimes all you need to do is some very subtle eye darts. And remember that overshoot and overlap and bringing the character into a pose nicely does a lot of the work for you and will set the pattern for the rest of the moving hold. If you're stuck in creating motion, give the controls a little wiggle and start building up from there. So that about wraps up this video, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.